Okay, so this is nothing new for many of you who have uh, played around with the Jewel Thief. But, you know, <clears throat> I was reading uh, some of the writings on Talking Electronics from Colin Mitchell, where he swears up and down that, you know, when things are set up properly on a Jewel Thief, that contrary to a lot of opinion, um, it's more efficient than driving LEDs with direct current and um, you know I always sort of thought yeah whatever so here's an 8 millimeter lead hooked up to two 1.2 batteries as you can see there's not much there of course it's not drawing any current either but nonetheless it's completely useless light when I started watching Z2 vids and I saw him working with you know in most cases with with some exceptions uh, he's he's using a capacitor parallel with his resistance against the base of transistor which I thought was quite interesting although the first many times I tried to employ the method it really didn't seem to make any difference at all anyhow what I'm doing today is I'm running two in series but you know two times 1.2 is still only 2.4 and these particular LEDs are calling for 3.2 to 3.6 so it's still a jewel thief and let's look at the the amp draw right now now I'll try to get this thing as centered as possible. It's about 90, and I know this is not super accurate. But what I wanted to show was, is when you play around with it, and you get that resistor at the right value, watch what happens when you add that capacitor, okay? So, I'm going to touch it against these two leads, which is the resistance, alright? So you can see what's happening there in terms of the brilliance. I can't show you both things at once, I'm sorry. What I will do is, is show you this. Okay, now watch while I do that what happens to my amp draw. So you know what I've learned from Z2 vids is very valid you know when he talks about his draw and how he gets it down there he's not just reducing his draw what he's doing is he's getting better light for less input of current so if I slide that into place okay so as a final step what you want to do is you want to find the right load as well now in the before I had four in parallel and I've knocked it back to three I've changed the value of the resistor such that I still get some some decent light like you see if I turn this big lamp off here you can see I still got some pretty decent light coming off those LEDs um, but I I uh, I'm not drawing a ton of current probably at about a hundred milliamps let's say so I'm happy with that balance where you watch the current go down and then you watch the light and you don't want the, the, the lumens to go down to the point where it's useless but you're sort of a happy medium let's say and once you hit that point you you compare that to say when you had one more lead on there in this case I'm happier and then as a final thing you add your capacitor and you see what happens to that situation versus your one before and see if there's a, 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 a substantial gain maybe more gain than you had before now in this case that's what I'm what I'm seeing because it's it's balancing to this load better now you can see that increase 
quite a jump, right? Quite a jump in brilliance there. What is happening to my amp draw simultaneously? It's dumping. So you can see over there, I'm getting a big jump in light, and at the same time, my amp draw is right down. And, you know, after a lot of fooling around with this, it's my belief that, yeah, it is more efficient, simply because you're not putting resistance between the lead and its source. So the driving voltage of the lead is lower. You see there, I've got three LEDs running on 2.4, probably at, you know, 40, 50 milliamps which is totally reasonable. Those LEDs are probably driven at oh 60 percent of normal and there's three of them. It's so low that you're not even entirely certain what it is like I would say 20 milliamps maybe uh, yeah 20-25 milliamps and you know to me that's efficient those those leads are are supposed uh, supposed to consume 100 milliamps each at 3.6 volts, and I'm using 20 milliamps to drive them at 2.4 volts. Let's say. Anyways, thanks a lot to Z2 and uh, Magnetisys for keying me into this. And if you if you've only done the basics with the Jewel Thief, play with it for a little bit because there there actually is more to it there. Thanks very much for watching. Okay, and so from there you had your original setting, which was your 20 milliamp draw, which will be your low setting. Then you find your second value of resistance that gives you your high setting. Now in the case here, you can see I'm at about 90 milliamps and you can see the light that's coming off of that now is substantially brighter so that would be my high setting and uh, you can see that in a totally dark room um, you know you have quite a bit of light uh, focus there we are yeah so there's your there's your high setting so now you have a nice little uh, night light that's equivalent to you know it's definitely equivalent to a 7 watt incandescent night light and you're still at a hundred under a hundred milliamps which is the c consumption that normally would be allotted for one of those LEDs at 3.6 volts and of course you have no resistors in line with them and I don't see why they wouldn't last. I mean, they're not. They're they're up to what I would call about 70% brightness now. But I think that it's more efficient when you play around with it. And I think that you can take this further and go to the 12 volt level, as shown on Talking Electronics, and end up with a a, a pretty cool thing. You might have to do a bit of a boost conversion where you're no longer one to one on your coil um, or sorry at 12 volts you might have to do you know you probably do a buck conversion where you're actually stepping down that 12 volts and surge current pulsing um, at a lower voltage but nonetheless you can take it further than just firing up one lead on a double-a battery and having it dimly lit and being somewhat disappointed Thanks for watching.